I'm back. This is Chandler for Melda Production, and today I'm going to be going over more granular synthesis inside M Sound Factory. Last week I kind of did a walkthrough of it, but this week I'll actually make something with it. I should remind you, this isn't technically out now, but it should be coming very, very soon. Because of that, I thought I'd give you a little preview of some of the things we can do with it. This time I want to show you how you can take your own sounds, like a normal sound, and turn into something cool. So I have a, I guess, Tibetan singing bell. Actually, there's a Japanese singing bell, but uh, anyways, it's some type of singing bell, and we're going to use that as the basis of our sound. So I'll let you hear it here. Okay, that rings for a long time, so I don't want to have it going too long. So we're going to take this and we're just going to import it into M Sound Factory, which is easy. First thing we should do though, as long as we have a blank project, let's move the attack down to zero, move the sustain all the way up. We'll probably want to change the release later, but eh, for now it's all right. Let's go into the generator and let's find the granular sampler and open it. And we could start from here, but I actually made my own preset, the default, where I'm just turning these things off and turning the attack down. So that's where I'd like to start. So that's why I made this preset. You can do the same thing if you like. Here, if I have this on, you can hear what this sounds like. So that's a vocal sound, but it's way too low. What we want to do is import that bell sound. Now we could look through the custom path and find it on our computer, but since I already have this here, I'm going to take this and just drag it in here. Actually, here? Yeah, there we go. Yeah. And you see, you just found it there. So from here, we can just take this start and just move it wherever we want. If I play it here... Okay, it's not even getting to where it's supposed to, so we'll just move it here. Let's see, the length, I want the rate a little bit lower just so we can hear what it sounds like at first. I'll turn the width off too, and let's hear it now. Now that's okay. Also, if you're wondering, like, ah, oh, I want to get right there, if you use your mouse wheel on PC, you can zoom in. So you see here, like, ah, actually, a little bit early. Let's move it up a little bit there. So you can move it in and out with the mouse wheel. Just get it exact if that's what you want. And then from there, we can play it. The problem with this is it's not on pitch. Now, if you're just using it as an effect, it doesn't really matter, but Let's say you're going to use this in a song. You need it to be on pitch. So we're going to use calculate pitch here. Just set it like this, I guess. You could adjust it if you wanted to, but uh, I think this is enough. Use process. Look at the root here. Okay, it moved it down for us and it fine tuned it. Click OK. And that's great, but the problem is it's way too high. I can play chords with it though. And you're wondering, like, how do I move it down? I could go in the globals and move everything down, but you don't need to do that. You can just go into the pitch, and then move it down like this. So set that wherever you like. Now that we have that, that's cool. If we put the attack on here, should get more of a pad sound where the attack is swelling in. That sounds kind of like you're stroking the uh, bowl, so that's kind of cool, but uh, we can do something a little bit different here. We can go here and we can actually reverse it. So put it the reverse here to 100%. Oh, another thing. I know this is kind of annoying, like, ah, oh, well, I have to go up and down like this. You can just pop it out here. So now let's see it in reverse. It should probably start around here someplace. Now that could be okay for you. I think a thousand, I can move it up a little bit longer. With that attack in there, it kind of smooths it out a little bit. And we can also increase the rate. This rate is a bit slow. Let's move it here. If you think, oh, I don't like that, sound at the end, we can move the position up here. And another thing we might want to do is here, let's 
move the volume up because as you can hear, it's a little bit low. We're going to turn that up. Just in case, like all metal plugins, we have the limiter so we can put that on just in case it gets too out of control. Now from here, there's other things we might want to do. We can mess with the rate so it's not always the same. Uh, or we could use the probability like this. So sometimes I like to turn the probability down a bit and then turn the rate to a shorter time like this. So that way it isn't coming out quite so evenly. Uh, other things we could do, you could actually modulate the rate here. I'm trying to think what's the best way to do this. Maybe I could use the random here. This just uh, 500 is maybe too much. Maybe here, do up and down. There we go. Maybe this. So whichever one you like is fine. Uh, let's just do it a little bit like this. Let's turn the width up so now we'll have stereo. Now I'm liking this, but let's add some detune in here too. We could use the random again, or we could use true noise. I'm not sure if it really matters so much. Let's just set this to maybe eight or 10 the sounds. If we move it too high like this, probably don't want that. A little bit subtle bit is good, so I like to put it around 10 or so or 8, but put it wherever you like. This is sounding pretty good to me. Sound like, you know, the sound is surrounding me, a little bit haunting sound. Uh, we're going to turn up the release a little bit here, so when I take my finger off, it sticks around for a few seconds. A little bit more. Seems pretty good. Now, there's lots of other things we could do. Like, let's say we want to put say maybe an EQ on here, just so we can get rid of probably the low end there. So, listen to it here. See all this stuff down there? That's stuff we don't need. So we can just go in here and we can high pass that. And of course we can mess with the other things too, but we don't really need to for this, I think. We're gonna also put some reverb on there. Let's use M Turbo Reverb. You can use anything here. I'm gonna use Randy Hall. Let's put it vintage setting. Uh, over there, turn the modulation up. This, now let's hear it. That's sounding pretty good to me. It sounds like, you know, something like you hear in a horror movie or something, especially if I play a few other notes. Now, I could use that right there. And of course, we could stop there. But let's say if I want another sound, maybe a, a synth going down, like a synth sweep. Let's go in here and add our oscillator here. Turn the unison on. Move this up a little bit. Seems okay. From here, let's add some kind of filter. Let me just add the fast filter. Turn this up. Turn the analog up. Start around two. Let's set something that'll just sweep down. So turn this attack on here. Move the time up to maybe about one second. Uh, five octaves. Let's try this. A little bit longer. Okay, that's good enough. It's just kind of a demonstration. Now let's mix these together, put this on. Actually, before we do that, 
What we want is we want this to not be triggered by every single note. I don't want to... I don't want that. I just wanted this one low note. So what I can do here is go into the oscillator, choose the max note, and I'll play, let's say the... I was playing C, so let me play the D and just move this down until it stops playing. Okay, so that's where it was. So if I play the C, we have it. D, nothing plays. So let's turn all this on. Let's move both of these into that reverb. I don't need the low cut for my bass. Uh, let's put the mixer in here. Right click it, click input one, input two, which is where our synth is coming from. Steal input so it doesn't come out of input two. There we go. Close. Everything should be routed correctly. So let's play it all together with a chord. Actually, first, before we play it, we should probably turn it down. That's very important. So let's go to the mixer here and let's turn these down by, I don't know, four, four. Here we go. Now let's play it. Sounds like something out of a, a bad detective movie from 20 years ago. But anyways, maybe you can use this on some kind of a TV show or something. It's definitely an interesting sound. And this will hopefully show you how you can load your own samples into here quickly. You can have them get them going backwards and create a pad out of almost anything. This one actually isn't the best for pads because it's going to sound a little bit inharmonic. So if I play the C and the E... It's kind of so-so, but playing octaves and fifths will work. If you have a more pure tone, you'll be able to play anything you want with it. But for these things that are more like uh, almost inharmonic, eh, it's so-so. <laughs> you have to see yourself. Even without that, there's lots of cool textural things you can do, and I'll show you those in the future. So if you want to see that, make sure you subscribe. Also, give me a thumbs up and leave any questions or comments down below. And make sure you check out all the other plugins at meltaproduction.com. Till next time, see you.